Welcome to another thrilling journey into the world of innovation, where cutting edge ideas defy the odds and turn dreams into reality. Nestled in an unassuming garage in Oakland, California, a team of passionate visionaries at Longshot are hard at work. Their mission, to create a groundbreaking kinetic launch system that will slash the cost of space exploration and pave the way for rapid hypersonic testing. This seemingly humble location is a testament to the transformative power of human ingenuity. So buckle up and join us as we dive into the heart of 21st century innovation and uncover the magic that often unfolds in the most unlikely of places. What's up, Mike? Hey, man. Welcome to Longshot Space here in beautiful Oakland, California. Let me show you around. So we have three spaces. This is the kind of primary engineering bay. We store a lot of our stuff in here, and this is where we do a lot of the metal bending work. Uh, over there is primarily electronics workspace. This is all storage. We have a lot of like pressure tubing, pressure fittings, stuff like that over here. And then out here is the main bay. Uh, we painted the ceilings, we painted the floor, we cleaned this place up a lot before we came in so we could make it dirty in our own way. Um, over there, we've got a little tiny water jet. We've got a routing table tucked into that corner, a big fat lathe, a mill. Basically, the biggest equipment that you can really get without uh, three-phase power. This uh, bandsaw is made in like 1966. It might be the most used piece of equipment in the shop. I got it from some guy in uh, Santa Cruz for like two grand. And here, this is where we make the magic happen. This is where we build space guns. This is where we build our hypersonic accelerator and all the projectiles that we shoot out of it. Come with me, let me show you a projectile. This is one of our early test projectiles right here. The very first ones that we launched were actually just carved out of blocks of wood. Here we're actually trying to optimize for mass a little bit. So this is aluminum and carbon fiber, and that's about it. The uh, surfaces that are in contact with steel are all kind of expendable plastics that are a little bit flexible so it doesn't bind. We're hoping that we'll be able to push over Mach 5 with, if not this, something that looks a lot like it. it still needs to get put together. So that's gonna be smashing into a concrete wall? Absolutely, yeah. This, so we have a high speed camera that can do up to like uh, 40,000 frames a second. So we'll be watching this thing exit the tube and as long as it exits in one piece, we're pretty happy. Once it exits the tube though, it's only gonna fly for a couple of meters before it hits basically a safe filled with concrete. We need to make sure the thing stops. This is much more akin to what we used to be launching. This was like really early projectile. This thing weighs like a kilogram and a half. We wanted to get to lighter stuff so we could get to higher speeds. But these things, they definitely came out of the tube in one piece. And let me tell you, like that safe full of concrete, it knew that it had been hit. Like those guys got a lot of kinetic energy in them. These guys right here are capacitors that will kill you dead. And then those guys right there are capacitors where your grandchildren will be born electrocuted. Like those will totally do you in super fast. What are they use capacitors? What's their role? Oh, so we have a challenge in that we have to release a bunch of gas with like super, super precise timing. And the way that we do that is we have effectively a balloon of steel a burst disc, and then we pop it, we pop it. And the needle that we use to pop that balloon is these guys. So we basically drop a huge arc of power right onto a very concentrated point of that disc, right where it's closest to failing and it flowers open. Making sure that it does that without producing some shrapnel is actually one of the other things that I'm actually pretty proud. We've done some good work on that. We do actually have some 3D printers. Uh, the small one on the left right there, the uh, Mark Forge, it's actually really cool because it prints in this extremely strong carbon fiber material. So it's really nice if you want a really strong small part, like that's what we use. But it's expensive, so if we can get away without using it, we try not to. Uh, let me take you out and show you the actual prototype. So again, it's gonna be pretty dark in here. Men at work. This is the part where I tell you to just act natural. Okay, cool. So we're looking at, this is a pressure vessel right here. This is basically the base of our potato gun. And then we've got about 70 feet, 60 feet worth of barrel right here. 
uh, maybe like 65 or so. And this thing, when it fires, it really wants to move pretty badly. We have to make very careful that we have the thing tightly secured because this is a huge volume to be releasing like a thousand pounds per square inch from. There's a lot of gas moving out of this thing. Uh, when we pop that balloon, everybody knows it. it. Makes a good deal of noise. Come on down to this end. So as we move down the system, it's not just one injection of gas. So you have a huge boom over there. The projectile gets pushed forward here. A sensor detects the transit of the projectile and then a second injection of gas takes place. That pushes it even faster, all the way down here. A third injection of gas takes place here, and the projectile exits out the end and slaps into that target at the end. This box right here contains a high-speed camera. That's, you don't want the high-speed camera like in direct line of sight to whatever it is you're doing. So the high-speed camera looks at a mirror, which then shows it the transit of the projectile. And that's actually how we get information about how fast the projectile is moving when it's at its highest speed. The interior of this entire thing is evacuated. So we use a sheet of mylar that covers the disc, that covers this right here, and we draw a vacuum down on the entire system. This tube with vacuum drawn in it lets you go way faster with a projectile than if this thing was basically had a, like a compressed wave of air ahead of a projectile. So that's where the magic happens. And then in this transit right here is where we watch the projectile as it's moving at its fastest speed. And then that's where it stops over there. That safe is, that safe has really been through it, man. Let me that's tell you what. The, uh, that's the metal safe that got tipped over the first time we did it? Yeah, the first time we did it, it was over there. And we just thought, well, you know, it's like a two ton safe, it'll be fine. But it basically did a backflip the first time we hit it. And uh, you can actually see that the back is bowed out ever so slightly. Um, so we we're like, ooh, okay, that's a little bit too juicy. So we decided, we tipped the thing over, we filled it full of concrete and rebar. It's a lot heavier, maybe twice as heavy now as it started off. We also take a bunch of sheets of layered steel mixed with um, nylon carpet, actually, and stack that up ahead of the projectile. So it hits those steel plates, it goes through the nylon carpet, it doesn't even touch the concrete anymore. Uh, it's usually stopped before it hits that point. It also helps that we're launching a much lighter projectile. Oh, that's good. Don't use your bare eyes looking at the um, uh, welding. Oh, there you go, that's perfect. Yeah, just carve your name into it. <laughs> okay, cool, you're good. Thanks, man. Over the past couple of weeks, we went from Mach 1.3 to Mach 2.2 just doing basically a test fire every single other day. We've basically got the accelerator debugged at this point, and it's just a matter of iterating on projectiles. I'm actually really confident that we're gonna be over Mach 5 within the next couple of weeks. And again, that's just a basic proof of concept for a few of the engineering principles that are necessary for a much larger system. This is the smallest possible version of the thing that can push a projectile over Mach 5.